project of this kind is important not only for the law of murder, obviously, but it's important also for the commission. Because if you get a project like this wrong, there is reputational risk to the commission. I mean, there's no doubt about it. And that will impact not only on the criminal projects, but on other projects that you may be engaged in. Not necessarily in the long term, but certainly in the short term. I'll give you an example. When we produced our consultation paper, um, there was, amongst other brickbats and criticisms, uh, a Matt cartoon in the Telegraph in which a man had a dunce's cap on and was standing facing the wall in the classroom, and one person was saying to the other, now, under the proposals, that's the punishment you'll be getting for murder. Um, so, well, uh, but, uh, I mean, uh, but by the time we came to do our report, we had uh, editorials in the Telegraph and in the Times saying that the government should immediately act <coughs> to implement our proposal. So, in the end, the publicity battle was won, but um, uh, it was touch and go. So, uh, it is incredibly important to, to, to get it right. Uh, uh, I, I know that's, you might say, well, that's obvious, but it, 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 reputational risk is very important in these cases. Um, uh, and so, um, and partly I think that that uh, has an impact on, on what you do, because there is a risk of being over-ambitious, over essentially. Um, there, there is a sort of rule of thumb, if there's a problem, well then fix it. But if you uh, try to get too over-ambitious, you may find that the project is caught up in side issues or controversial things that you didn't really want to, to focus on, and the really important thing becomes lost in the... Um, uh, uh, now, this is a long-term project in, in the terms in which it would be reviewed in England and Wales. Five years um, is a long time. Maybe it would be an idea to break the project up, to, um, to find a patch for... Uh, uh, or to look specifically at the mens rea issue, but without necessarily prejudicing what you're going to say about defences in the future or um, the structural law of homicide or something like that. I mean, that, that might be one way in which to, rather than trying to bite the whole thing off from one big lump, um, it may be possible to do it. I don't say it will be, but it might be. Um, and that might make sense, actually, because otherwise um, it's too difficult for constant scenes to really focus in on uh, in any great detail if you do too much, basically. Okay. Um, well, uh, you, 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 essentially, you're on, uh, the Scottish Law Commission is under broadly the same constraints that the um, Law Commission for England and Wales, Wales was under. Um, so I won't, uh, there's more slides here than I can possibly go through in 15 minutes, so I'm, just, I'm going to flick through a little bit. Um, so um, I, I won't go through the, the restrictions because they're broadly the same uh, as our terms of reference were. Um, and we know what the, the reform issues are most concerned with. It's the, it's the relationship between homicide offences, their contents, and then the applicability of the defences. Um, now, um, uh, something that uh, uh, is perhaps a little bit, is forgotten about a little bit now, uh, but it, it's important to remember, was that um, when, we, um, when we consulted on uh, uh, reform of murder, our initial provisional proposal was that murder should be restricted to intent to kill cases. So, uh, in other words, we were looking for a very simple, um, straightforward structure that wouldn't get us drawn into the never-ending controversy about what you do when you step beyond that category, basically. Um, uh, because the argument was you can always um, uh, 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 tweak around with the sentencing structure, and I'll come back to that, in cases that fall outside the intent to kill. Uh, and it, 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 that plays well in one sense with um, the opinions of the public, because if you ask the average member of the public, well, what's murder? Well, then they will give they will give an intent to kill kind of example. So in that sense, it it, it, it has some resonance very broadly. Um, but of course, if you narrow murder in that way, very obviously, then you expand the scope of um, <coughs> uh, uh, culpable homicide, and that leads to a secondary set of problems about how you're going to deal with the way that judges look at those cases. So that has to be looked at. Um, uh, very obviously, if you narrow murder, you're going to reduce the number of murder convictions, and that's going to be a headline in waiting further down the, the line, which you're going to need to, to think about as a set of reformers. Um, and um, that's going to increase the overall level of discretion over what happens in homicide cases. Um, we, we did try to, uh, there was, in the end, there wasn't time, but uh, I couldn't arrange it, but we, I did want to look actually at all the um, murder convictions for a, a single year uh, in the Ministry of Justice's files to try and work out actually which one of them, in a rough and ready way, by looking at the facts, how many of them would still have been murder under the proposals, because it's, but in the end we didn't get around to that. But that is something I think that might be worth doing. Um, if uh, the, the relevant office has those files, get, get, get someone with a relevant security clearance to look through them, try to work out 
you know, on thought experiment basis, what might happen, um, so that people have some idea. Because uncertainty and um, uh, is liable to generate a, a small c conservatism over how far you can go with reform. Um, so I think you do need to give some idea about what sort of impact there's going to be on the numbers of murder convictions if you go down a certain route. I think it's important not to be too coy about that. And, of course, to indicate what your sentencing regime is going to be so that people are clear about that. And I've said I'll come back to, to that. Now, I say here, and I think this is important, that we've, it's been mentioned once already, but I don't apologise for mentioning it again, that in an area like this, murder, uh, you know, this, this is not like reform of um, you know, uh, uh, restricted covenants or um, some obscure aspect of whatever it may be. Uh, this is something where actually the person in the pub is just as entitled to have a view about what the scope of the offence is as anyone here, uh, absolutely. Um, and so uh, 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 proper empirical research into the public's views uh, 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 is important. Um, that can cost a lot, but it need not, uh, because it could be that you only want, you know, or you feel it essential, to look at public opinion in certain key areas. Uh, we had it for a, in relation to provocation. We conducted a small, actually quite quick, um, but professionally conducted survey on provocations, defence to murder, <coughs> and the government was, as it were, honest enough to admit that it changed their mind. They actually said in their paper, we were going to abolish provocation, but when we saw the results of the Law Commission survey, we changed our mind. Um, uh, so it can have a huge impact, actually, on what the government thinks. Um, and in a way, it's a way of putting the government on the back foot, because you can say, look, you know, this is not just a bunch of professors you know, dreaming up some ideal scheme. The public is with us on this. And so the government is then obliged to say, well, uh, you know, well the public may think that, but we, well, but who wants to? Yeah, you get the point. Um, so, uh, and, and there's also a lot more research out there now on what the public thinks, actually, uh, and I've given a reference to it here. So uh, it's not as if this is um, uh, uh, completely uncharted territory. I mean, of course, it relates to England and Wales, but it may nonetheless have some resonance. Um, and um, so, um, it, it, it clearly, uh, I know this is a results-driven way of looking at it, but in a way, that's what I'm hoping to add here, is I'm not, I'm not here to tell you what Scottish law should be, I'm here to tell you, well, have a look at the consequences first, the bottom line, then work backwards and see what you want. Um, so one way of looking at this is to say, well, we, you know, we, we, we're happy with the level of murder convictions that there currently are, so what we want is a set of proposals that won't disturb that too much, if you like. Uh, I mean, that would be one way of, of looking at this, and not a completely stupid way to look at it, actually. Um, so um, the other thing about a narrower uh, law of murder, as well as uh, um, meaning that the, the number of convictions is going to drop uh, very probably, um, not just because of the definitional issues, but also because the prosecution may be more likely to accept a plea to culpable homicide, something like that, so it will drop further. Um, but also there will be uh, uh, an impact on, on defences. So one of the things that concerned us was in the consultation was that if you confine murder to intent to kill, Actually, uh, a doctrine of provocation will, if not become redundant, at least become much less relevant. Because the, the defendant's just going to be able to say, well, I was so furious that actually, yes, I intended a violent act against the victim, but intent to kill? I wasn't thinking that straight. Um, well, that's going to become a very plausible claim, actually. Um, and so you're barely going to need uh, a, a doctrine of provocation in a, in a, in a sort of very doctrinally well-worked-out form. Um, or so, it, or, or that might be that you might well think along those lines. So, it, it, it could, in theory, at least, have quite a radical implication for the way that you approach um, defences. So, um, uh, and that's something obviously that you're familiar with because of what Lord Roger said in Drury about um, sort of wicked intent. But I mean, nonetheless, the, the issue applies uh, to intent to kill cases more, <laughs> more generally. Actually, um, well, now getting on to. Well, to a certain extent, structures. The, 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 uh, so this is sort of first-degree murder, second-degree murder, manslaughter. Now, he, here is a general lesson about law reform, and I'm sure you'll, you'll, you'll be aware of this, but nonetheless, it's worth repeating. But just because something's popular doesn't mean that it's a good idea. Right? <laughs> now, um, the distinction between first-degree murder, second-degree murder, and manslaughter was I mean, very widely accepted across the board. I mean, but victims' groups, the Ministry of Defence, judges, um, prosecutors, they all thought this was a great idea, but actually, I'm not sure it is such a great idea. Uh, okay, uh, and that's not the only example. When I first arrived at the commission, we were consulting on whether there should be an offence of theft of confidential information. 
We went out to consultation. We got 80 replies, which is a lot on quite a narrow view. All of them, except one, were in favour of having an offence of theft of confidential information. The one that was against was contained such a devastating and compelling criticism of our proposal that we had no no option but to drop the whole thing. Um, uh, that was Mr. Justice Laddie, uh, <laughs> who knows a thing or two about that area of the law. Um, so actually, and, and that is quite important, actually, because um, uh, <laughs> uh, and the other thing, of course, is, is precedent. Uh, I discovered that only subsequently that a royal commission looked at this uh, in 1866. Uh, they recommended a structure of first and second degree murder with manslaughter underneath it, and the government then, as now, rejected it uh, uh, as being um, um, unworkable, essentially. Um, so, um, uh, and I think that uh, it, 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 it can seem initially attractive because it, it's a way of saying, oh, well, uh, uh, we'll have um, uh, murder one will be intended to kill, murder two can be um, uh, wicked recklessness, which is what we actually proposed in the consultation paper, but we didn't use the word wicked, but essentially, so it's the same. And then you've got manslaughter underneath that, so, so um, there you go. Um, and um, uh, it also had, uh, victim groups were very in favour of the idea that the defence of provocation and diminished should be second degree murder. They liked that idea because um, it reflects the fact that there was intent, an intent to kill. Uh, we, we, and so they thought that actually should make it second degree murder, not manslaughter, and, and that seemed reasonable too, actually. Um, uh, but um, uh, unfortunately, the, 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 the consultation paper ran into heavy uh, weather because uh, of the confining of murder to intent to kill, which was it would, uh, which, and, it, and it actually, it's the same thing that was said in 1866 that given the choice. Juries will always go for the lower option, so effectively murder will you know, disappear off the landscape other than in cases where you know, you've got a <coughs> planned assassination or something of that nature or some massive terrorist incident. Uh, it's going to pretty much drop off the landscape. That's not acceptable, um, and therefore we won't go down that, that road. Um, and I think that, that fundamentally is the problem with what looks like actually a relatively straightforward and simple reform. It's not, going to, it's not going to play well, if I can put it in that way, with government and the general public, I think, very probably. Um, however, um, one way to try and make it work, and, and this actually, I think, might be of help to you in looking at culpable homicide anyway, actually, is to have a sort of slightly different sentencing regime. I mean, at the moment, here, it's the same as England Wales. That is, you've got mandatory life sentence for murder, then you've got discretionary for manslaughter. Maybe you've got some guidelines um, to go along with that. But actually, um, uh, let me just skip on to that now. Um, uh, the sentencing wasn't within our remit, because the government was much more restrictive about what the Lord Commission could do then than it is now, um, when it is about political sentencing. But we, we, so all we could do was put a kind of straw in the wind uh, in in the paper, it's in there um, somewhere. Um, and what, what we said is that um, in second degree murder cases, to distinguish them from manslaughter cases in the, from point of sentencing, you could have what we called um, uh, a kind of minimax <coughs> sentence. Uh, in other words, the trial judge would specify not only the maximum as normal, but also the minimum. Um, so in other words, the judge would say in a second degree murder case, you will serve 15 to 20 or something of that nature rather than simply specifying the maximum of 20 and then leaving the minimum um, to be, well, whatever it is under the general law, half or something like that. So, and we thought that would be a distinctive way of marking out second degree murder cases. Uh, and it might, something along those lines might help you a little bit um, in, uh, uh, in, in reform or sentencing, I don't know. But just going back to the, um, the, uh, the homicide ladder, well, I, I think something we didn't really look at, we probably should have done, uh, goes back to our own part in a way, is that um, you have to consider uh, um, multi-handed trials with defenders all making different claims, so all trying to put the blame on each other, uh, minimise their own uh, liability, and so on. And that might mean you've got um, some people saying, well, you know, I wasn't there at all. Others, was, others are saying, well, uh, I was there, but I, you know, I never thought it would end up quite as badly as that. Um, to different degrees. So some may be making a pitch for manslaughter, some for second degree murder, some for murder. And, and this is going to get very complicated. This is going to get very difficult. Um, 
Uh, I don't uh, underestimate the ability of juries to do justice at the end of the day. You know, they listen to the judge's instructions and then they just do the thing they think is just. Um, well, that's all right. Um, but uh, um, it, it is an overcomplication, there's no doubt about it, to have these further degrees. It works in the US because in the US you have a lot of plea bargaining. Um, and these things are not um, uh, 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 tried systematically in the way that they would be in the United Kingdom, I believe. Um, now, it may be that the way that jury trials work in Scotland means that this is not such a problem uh, as it would be in England and Wales. There's a particular problem with what do you get if you have jury disagreement between, say, second degree and murder, murder and manslaughter? Does that mean you have to have a retrial? I mean, that would be really bad. Um, so the, 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 I, I think, and that problem is aggravated if you introduce further categories. So these are my current worries, if you like, about this structure. I still favor it, actually, but my, the, the degree of my enthusiasm has dwindled, I have to say, over the years uh, for, for this reason, really. Um, OK. Um, I'll just say a very brief word if I have a, a minute. Do I have a second? Um, when am I supposed to be finishing? Yeah, just a, just a second. Um, on defences, I mean, obviously you could say too much or too little. Um, I mean, I, uh, as I said earlier on, I'd be sort of tempted to make this part two of the project, if you like, um, to, uh, uh, unless that risks extending the thing indefinitely. Uh, otherwise, there's just too much for the government and the public to, 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 to chew off, really. Um, now, um, I, uh, as I've already said, a, a public opinion survey was absolutely crucial in the way that we um, we, we uh, came to our recommendations on this. Um, uh, I, I won't say very much about what it, what should be in the defence, but um, I think it would be right to say that although much criticised um, for their complexity and rightly so, the uh, the reforms in England and Wales did actually take the law back. Uh, to what it was really meant to be, I think, which was a, a, a very wholly exceptional kind of set of circumstances to which it was possible uh, to escape um, the conviction for murder. So I think that Parliament was right to restrict it very, very, very much in, the, in that way and not just rely on a good old reasonable person test, essentially. Um, uh, the exceptionally great circumstances test is I, think a, is, I think, a workable and reasonable one, actually. Uh, to try and restrict the scope of this defence. So I, I, um, I, 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 I do think that was, in broad terms, the right move. Um, although, obviously, I don't agree with all the, the, the complicated structure in which it was um, uh, set up. Um, so, um, uh, and I, and so I don't actually think there was a need for the so-called um, infidelity exception, because it seems to me that that was already captured by the idea that there have to be exceptional circumstances. I mean, that, uh, the fact that um, a spouse or whoever is being um, adulterous is not an exceptional circumstance, really. So uh, it, it seems to me that was a complication too far. But that's, I'm getting now into substantive um, uh, suggestions, which I said I wouldn't do. Uh, but uh, I, I do actually think there is a continuing case for having this defence, actually. Um, uh, and if you, if you don't have it too much, excuse me, will have to go on at the sentencing hearing. Or, uh, and, and it's wrong to try to cut back too much the role of the jury. That is a real risk here, that if you, if you restrict the law of murder too much, giving judges too much discretion, if you remove defences or restrict their availability, thereby cutting out the role of the jury, you will run into um, objections. Um, that there's a very strong sense that actually uh, the, the legislature and the jury should be in the box seat, very broadly speaking, with these reforms. Um, so that, that is actually quite important. Um, one, uh, I just just one small point is that um, uh, uh, it's only a, uh, it's a technical point in a way, but I'm just kind of sore about it, um, which is that although we were quite we quite liked our diminished responsibility for reforms, and I still think the wording was good, we just forgot. There's no other way of explaining it or glossing it uh, to deal with the issue of voluntary intoxication. We just forgot. Um, and what's more, none of our consultees picked up on that point, neither did the government when they took the reforms through, so nobody uh, So we've had to rely on the courts to uh, cobble together some kind of solution, and they've done a, a kind of reasonable job. But it, it's meant that actually um, there's been a whole lot of cases that have had to be decided, you know, all at great cost to the public and so on, to try and smooth this part. So, so I mean, just don't forget, all right, to <laughs> deal with you know, uh, uh, <laughs> key points. Um, so, uh, I mean, I think the... It is going to be difficult to persuade the legislature to reform on such an sensitive area. I mean, it, it is going to be difficult. So the watchword, really, I think, is to try to keep proposals simple. As I said at the beginning, if there's a problem, try to fix it. Don't, don't 
use it as a, as a stepping stone to become too elaborate, essentially. Or if you're going to do that, uh, leave that to a kind of second stage, maybe. Um, uh, that might be the thing to do. Okay. Um, well, that wasn't very sort of doctrinal or scholarly, but then that's not what you have me here for. So, uh, okay, thank you very much. Well,